House Majority Whip Tom Emmer has dropped out of the race for speaker. House Republicans nominated him for the position just earlier today. He won against a crowded field of candidates after multiple votes behind closed doors. It's been three weeks since lawmakers voted to oust then-Speaker Kevin McCarthy. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian joins us now. Nicole, what is happening on the Hill? I mean, for a split second there, Tom Emmer was about to become a household name. It looked like he was making progress, and then all of a sudden, he's out. You know, we've, I don't know that we know the answer to this. I mean, look, this has been a very chaotic process. We did try to speak with Tom Emmer as he raced out of this hallway behind me. He did not speak at all to reporters when we asked him whether he was in the race or out of the race. But we have subsequently learned from members who were inside the room that he has withdrawn from this race. And this comes down to simply not having the votes, which has been the issue that has plagued just about every other person who has tried and failed to win the gavel. I spoke briefly with Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia. I asked her if one of the deciding factors for her was the fact that Tom Emmer actually voted to certify the 2020 election, which many Republicans, including Greene, did not. And she said that did play a factor in her decision to oppose him. At the end of the day, there were about 10 to 20 members who we're not backing Ember. He spent several hours trying to talk to some of them. Obviously, it does not appear that he was successful if he has now made this decision to drop out. But certainly that vote certifying the 2020 election appears to be just one of several factors that some Republicans are citing for their opposition to him. Nicole, certainly related to that, I want to ask you about the Trump factor, because the former president weighed in on Emmer and his potential majority run leader Scalise, here. can you please stop for a second? Sorry about that. That was no. just the majority leader, Steve Scalise, who was walking by. Obviously, we weren't able to get him to stop. We were trying. But, uh, you know, he has tried to be optimistic about this process and said that, you know, they are trying to work through this. But again, this begs some real questions about uh, the Republican Party. You know, just last week, I asked uh, Kevin McCarthy, the former speaker who was ousted, who, you know, this started this entire process, if the Republican conference was broken. And his answer, simply put, was yes. You know, and so I think this really is a moment where Republicans are going to have to do some soul searching here, uh, because as one member put it to us earlier today, they've gone through their top three. They've gone through Steve Scalise, who just walked past me. They have gone through Jim Jordan, who is considered a rising star, one of their uh, top uh, Republicans in the party. And they have also now gone through Tom Ember, who's a number three Republican in the House. Uh, we ju I do just want to bring in... Uh, uh, Congressman uh, Dusty Johnson, who has actually been one of the brokers uh, in some of these discussions as Republicans who have been trying to work through these various series of candidates. And Congressman, I just want to get your reaction first and foremost to Whip Emmer dropping out of this race. Tom Emmer would have been a good speaker. He knows how to count votes. He knows how to listen to members. He knows how to uh, put together a vision for a plan uh, for a team that needs to move forward together. It's unfortunate. In the same way, it was unfortunate that Jim Jordan had to get out and that Steve Scalise had to get out and that Kevin McCarthy was thrown out. These are but, all sir, this is more than unfortunate. I mean, you don't have a leader and you can't seem to agree on one. Yeah, I mean, I guess you and I can have play the semantics game. You know, unfortunate, really unfortunate, terribly unfortunate, tragic. The bottom line is we just have to get a game plan moving forward. I mean, I'm frustrated, as every American should be. I think this reminds me how terribly irresponsible it was for the eight chaos agents uh, on my side of the aisle to work with the 208 uh, Democrats to put the House into this degree of absolute unpredictability. We're in, we're in a bad spot. Now, that being said, smart guys and smart gals need to roll up our sleeves. We need to quit complaining. We've got to find a way through this darkness. What is that game plan? I think we need to remind everybody that until we can come to an agreement, the House is shut down. While the House is shut down, we can't secure the border. We cannot help our friend Israel. We cannot take care of Americans who have needs uh, today. We cannot try to avoid a government shutdown, which is staring us in the face in just a few weeks. We have real work to get done. And unfortunately, too many people in that room 
are more comfortable saying no. They'd rather win the fight and keep a shut down than find a way forward. And just yesterday, you told me you think the odds of a shutdown come November 17th is increasing based on this situation. Yeah, uh, shutdowns are stupid. They don't save any money. We're $33 trillion in debt. Clearly, we need a fiscal responsibility reset, and I've backed a lot of mechanisms to get that done, some of them successfully. Most of the people who want to shut down the government say, oh, we need to do that to save money. It does not save a nickel. It costs us billions. And unfortunately, because Republicans in the House don't have a leader, we don't have a strategy for how to get conservative wins while keeping the government open. In terms of the path forward, I mean, is now the time to maybe revert back to this idea of empowering Speaker Pro Tem Patrick McHenry? One concern is that to get that done, I think Democrat votes would be necessary. And there's not a lot of trust right now. I mean, th this three weeks of chaos was done absolutely, first and foremost, by eight hardline Republicans, some of whom love chaos, but they couldn't have done it on their own. And the but do you need to start having those conversations with Democrats? I know they have indicated a willingness to, to work with Republicans. Part of the issue is when you have Democrats who are willing to embolden some of the most extreme voices in our conference three weeks ago, can we trust them not to do the same thing a week from now or a week from then? There is not a lot of trust. They frankly have not shown a willingness to put the stability of the House over their own partisan ends. And until there is some trust built there, I think Republicans are going to continue to work to get to 217 votes inside that room. And then just very quickly, yes or no, I know the former president put out a truth social post calling Whip Emmer a rhino. Do you think that is ultimately what broke his bid today? When, yes you, no? when you have 221 Republicans and you have to get 217 votes, any four members, any more than four members, can sink that speakership. And but do you think the former president is to blame well, in this? I don't know that it could help, right? But, uh, you know, Tom Emmer, uh, he was making some progress. I do think the former president, uh, former President Trump's comments could not have helped. All right. Thank you so much, Congressman Dusty Johnson. Appreciate you for stopping. We you back to you. Nicole, before I let you go, I have to ask what you think about the Trump factor, because, it, you know, the congressman there wasn't willing to say that, yes, it was because of Trump, but the timing doesn't appear to be just coincidental. So can anyone win here if they don't have the support of the former president? Yeah, well, it's a really double-edged sword, if you think about it, Rija, because just last week, the former president... It endorsed Jim Jordan, and it was a full-throated endorsement, and that was not enough to get him over the finish line. But yet, when he put out this Truth Social post criticizing him, and keep in mind the former president made clear just yesterday he was going to withhold his support or he was going to wait for a while. But once he put out that Truth Social post, we did see the momentum start to change. And now, of course, uh, Republicans down a third candidate in this race with a question of who, if anyone, will be next. All right, Nicole, thank you. Love seeing you play with the live ball and bringing us the very latest from The Hill.